Live from Loveland Pass. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week, we answer the question, why do some people hate cyclists? Plus, we take a look at the world's most expensive saddlebag, roadies beating mountain bikers at their own game. Plus, we've got all your usuals, extreme corner, GCN inspiration, and the best hacks and bodges from the last seven days. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that when aero is everything, all you need to do for 50 kilometers per hour is 200 watts. But when we say aero is everything, we mean aero is everything. You will need one of these. And they're not actually all that easy to ride. At least if Hank's attempt to ride one is anything to go by. But I'm not balancing, Good. Look where you want to go now, smile. Look up, that's it, through you go. Crashing, crashing. That looks sketchy as anything, Done, doesn't it? Yeah. And believe it or not, James managed to get one of those up to 60 k's an hour that very same day. And if you want to see him do it, just stay tuned to GCN on Sunday. And now we also learned this week that the legendary Alfredo Binder and our very own Lloydy, believe it or not, have something in common. As Cafe Roubaix pointed out on Twitter, Alfredo Binder is a three-time world champion, five-time winner of the Giro d'Italia, winner of 43 stages of Grand Tours, plus multiple classics, and Lloydy here was born on the same day. I Fish was Brock, indeed. Yes. In fact, Killian Kelly basically pointed that out on Twitter, didn't he? Because he put a very similar tweet up. He said, Daniel Lloyd was born on this day 39 years ago. His Palmares? and I just left it blank. No mention of the multiple Boxing Day 10 wins that I had over the years. Although, before anyone gets irate at him for saying it's disrespectful towards me and my results, I should point out that I texted him that morning asking him to put that up because I thought it would be funny. I can't imagine anyone was gonna think it was disrespectful, and that's a little bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit, yeah, very sad, sorry. Yeah. Well, it's quite funny though, so fair enough. Uh, right, now also this week, we learned that well, some people just really hate cyclists. There was a social media storm, an understandable outrage here in the UK, after the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead took steps to ban cyclists from meeting at a cafe for cyclists. Mm. The cafe in question being the Velo Life Cafe in Warren Road near Maidenhead. Now, once word got out about the ban, they took to Twitter, the council, to clarify things and tell everybody exactly what they were banning. So, apparently, they are still going to allow cyclists to use the cycling cafe and all of its facilities. That is very good of them. Yeah, really generous, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, local council allow students to use school. Uh, but anyway, what they did quote in that statement was that what they are banning are organised meets that start, end or stop at yes. the cafe. So the theory is that that would therefore stop large numbers of cyclists from congregating outside the cafe and, I quote, causing a nuisance to local residents. They then went on to say that if the situation doesn't improve, they would have to take action against the owners of Fellow Life. Wow. Uh, that tweet actually, with their statement to clarify their position, garnered over 1,000 responses, primarily, as you can imagine, from irate and still quite confused cyclists because it does seem like a really weird decision, doesn't it? For two reasons. Firstly, this all apparently stems from one single complaint that was made by a local resident. But secondly, when you look at pictures and street view of that cafe, they've got a huge off-road area with ample room for bike parking and ample room actually for people to stand when they meet. Yeah. It does beg a belief, really, doesn't it? Unless, of course, every cyclist that turns up that has really squeaky disc brakes. I just can't imagine everyone causing that much annoyance. And so it has led us to therefore conclude, once again, that some people just really hate cyclists. And they, we've therefore been wondering why that is. For me, I remember an article from the BBC a few years back that suggests that the reason car drivers and bikes and therefore a lot of people become enraged by cyclists is that we disrupt the moral order. So basically suggesting that because bikes can do things that cars can't, it kind of triggers this inbuilt psychological response that the author argues is actually the same response that keeps society as a whole together. You know, the fact that we abide by official and unofficial rules like queuing and paying taxes and all these things. Mm. But then why does that anger not get triggered when, for example, a motorbike weaves past you while you're stuck in traffic? I don't know. Back to the drawing board then, I think. Yes, evidently. I wonder 
where we're one of the major problems is just the general term cyclist. I mean, if you're out on the road, you get cut up by a car. You don't suddenly go around saying, I hate all car drivers. No, you? you'd say I hate BMW drivers. Oh yeah, I guess you might do, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't, don't you? I on do. the other side of the coin, if anyone that's on a bike, or even remotely near a bike to go, does something bad, it means a lot of people then just look at them and say, that's a reason to hate cyclists, all yeah. of them. Yeah, well, that was a point actually made by uh, British ex-professional Sean Yates. Uh, there was a bunch of teenagers caused havoc uh, in a city in the UK this week by riding bikes around a supermarket, after which the local police took to social media to say that they were examining a video of hashtag cyclists. Now, no idea why police force is using hashtags, certainly not one about cyclists, but Sean made the point that they weren't cyclists, they were just kids on bikes. Hmm. And that sort of wording also is part of the problem, really, yeah. isn't it? It kind of incites rage and hatred towards cyclists. And it appears to be a worrying trend that's only getting worse. It's like a sort of us and them mentality. Well, it's not all bad, because the Scottish police also took to Twitter, but instead they said this, hashtag cycle myths, another hashtag, uh, no pay, no say, I pay road tax, so should cyclists. To which they said, truth, road tax was abolished in the UK in 1937. Instead, you pay vehicle excise duty based on emissions, which goes straight to the Treasury Fund alongside alcohol and fuel. And then they've put a link in there as well for people that want to read more. Well, that's nice, isn't it? To have a police force actively and openly supporting cycling. Yeah, most cycling. do, I think. Most do. I was just really delighted recently when I watched a video with James May. For those of you who don't know who James is, he formed part of the trio that used to present Top Gear, uh, but now present a new programme which they've called The Grand Tour. That's quite a good start, isn't it? Naming their new programme after a bike okay, race. Yeah, that's very true, yes. Anyway, in this video, uh, he was asked if he could recommend any roads in the southeast of England that are full of cyclists on a sunny Sunday. And this was his response. He said, the bigger question here is why worry about cyclists? I mean, there are not that many of them. Bicycles are quite narrow. It's quite easy to get past them. Wait until it's clear, give them a wide berth and just go for it. Please let's not have any of this road sectarianism. We have enough common enemies like potholes, legislators, bad drivers, bad riders, goats, donkeys walking around in the road, ice, mud, all of those things affect us all. Don't worry about cyclists. Don't buy into the anti-cycling thing. It's not worth it. Yeah. Fair play. And that's actually not the first time he's been actively pro-cycling as well. No, that's very true. Also though, he couldn't be more in contrast to his colleague, Jeremy Clarkson, who on that very same YouTube channel, Drive Tribe, two days ago on Sunday, posted a video and it had a thumbnail that said, bikes can F off. And he then basically goes on a five minute run, which is completely anti-cycling and anti-cycle lanes. Yeah, now clearly that's kind of crappy clickbait, but it's very much part of the problem, isn't it? And I mean, imagine if instead of that, every car driver, every resident, every walker, every cyclist had the same attitude as people like James May. You kind of get the feeling the world might be a nicer place. Undoubtedly, yeah. it would be a better place to inhabit, wouldn't it? What we haven't done, done though, Sire, is really answer the question of what we do about the people who hate cyclists. And it's a really difficult one to answer. I think the only thing we can really do is go out on our bikes, abide by the laws of the road, ride responsibly, encourage other cyclists to do the same thing, but also not end up becoming haters ourselves. Not hate drivers, not hate other road users, and hopefully, eventually, karma will take its course. Yeah. Frustratingly, not a very proactive. Well, no course of action, is it? But still, I think you're right. It's probably the best one. Uh, although, we would be very interested to hear your thoughts on this subject as well, of course. Although, let's try and not have loads of clearly everyone hates cyclists and examples. Uh, let's try and keep it constructive, shall we? And then see if we can come up with any ways where we can actually try and reduce this weird transport sectarianism that seems to be burgeoning at the moment. Yeah, I look forward to reading your suggestions. Uh, let's finish on a positive note, shall we, Si? You've got to imagine that with all of the publicity that this story has garnered over the past seven days, the Velo Life Cafe must be absolutely raking in. Can you imagine how many individual cyclists are finishing or starting their individual ride and having an individual cappuccino and coffee there? Well, I can, and it looks very nice as well. Maybe we should go, Dan. Separately? Yeah, naturally. That should be easy, actually, because if I arrange to meet you there at 1, I know you won't be there until about 1.20. No, 1.05. Although, if we set off together and get there, I'll probably be there 20 minutes before you. <laughs> hey. Ooh. I didn't ask him to say that if he would like to say that that was disrespectful. <laughs> well, it's because you're 39 now, and I'm only 36. <clears throat> 
it's now time for your weekly GCN inspiration. You all know the score by now. You submit your photos using the upload, a link to which is in the description below. We pick our three favourites, and those favourites will get third place, £50 of voucher, second place, £75, and first place, £100. At least you thought you knew the score. Well, yeah, that's right. You say photos, Dan. We were thinking, well, why not video? We don't know what an inspirational video might look like, but we will leave that up to you. Uh, but from now on, uh, this competition is open to uh, photos and video yeah. as well. Although this week's winners are all photos. It will probably look nothing like a GCN video, <laughs> I'm imagining. Uh, anyway, without further ado, we'll crack on with the winners from this week. First up, in third place, uh, we have this one from Stephen in south of Whoa. Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, morning ride before work. In order to get 20 miles in before work, one has to start riding before the sun comes up. But the benefit is I get to see the sun come up. That's nice, isn't it? That is very cool. It says riding with a fellow neighbour. I'd say you've just been dropped there, but <laughs> yeah. I guess that's probably because you're taking a photo. But anyway, there we go. That's a cracker. That definitely gets me inspired to ride. Uh, right, next up, we got uh, one from Carl. Uh, this is from here in the UK, actually, at the Lake District, Coniston Copper Mines. He said, perfect gravel ride. And that does look pretty mint, doesn't it? Very cool indeed. It does. That makes you want to go out and ride some gravel. And that's the entire idea, really, of this segment. So Imagine if that, that was a video, Dan. Yeah, I was going to say, bear that in mm. mind with your videos. They need to make you want to go out and ride your bike. Uh, but we only have one winner, and that winner this week with the £100 is Ryan from uh, Above Gadman in Switzerland. You've got some names to read out now, Lloydie. Have oh, I really? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't even actually read this part of it yet. I just looked at the photo. Anyway, brilliant photo. Absolute banger. I think banger. you will agree. A little bit, uh, little bit moist and cold looking for my taste, but uh, still inspirational for those of us oh, yeah. that have to ride in those conditions. Right, let me give it a go. <coughs> go on, mate. Good luck. Uh, Ryan has been riding through Switzerland. Well done. And was about 300 metres from the top of System Pass. Uh, when the pass was closed due to a military vehicle sliding off the pass, I ultimately had to turn around and go over the Brunig Pass instead. But before I turned around, I went to explore the nearby Steingletscher. If anyone uh, from Switzerland would like to rank Lloydy on his pronunciation there, please get involved in the comment section down below. But anyway, let's not detract from that banger of a photo, because yeah, that was brilliant. seriously cool, wasn't it? Uh, right, if you want to get involved next week, remember to upload your photos or videos to the GCN Uploader, and then stick them on social media too, on uh, Instagram using the hashtag GCN Inspiration. And as you can probably guess, we're likely to use at least one video next week. <laughs> It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and you might perhaps have seen Ollie and Hank's World's Steepest Hill Climb. Well, hopefully they have. That was a really good one, wasn't it? That's a good point, actually. Consider this a call to action. If you haven't, watch it. Anyway, there was an official hill climb race up that very climb just the other day. Basically, it's like a time trial that was just 330 metres long. Yeah, but 330 of the most brutal metres you could possibly do. Uh, some amazing racing went on though, but the women's event was won by a certain Rebecca Richardson. Yeah, no relation. No, Rachel. clearly not. She's got way more talent than you, hasn't she? <laughs> she has indeed. Uh, the men's race was won by Callum Brown, and we saw his stats on Strava a quite astonishing average power of 1,021 watts for 51 seconds. Which is absolutely massive, yeah. isn't it? I mean, there are plenty of riders out there, Cy si included, who couldn't do that for a single second, no. let alone hold it for <laughs> almost a minute. Yeah, so massive was the power, we actually asked Chris Hoy to see what he used to do. He reckoned that the top riders on the track who were going sub 60 seconds for the kilo would be averaging about 1,300 watts. But he said in a very different way. So their start effort was about 2,300 watts plus, but yet by the end, when the lactate levels were right up at their ears, uh, they'd only be doing 300 watts. Oh. Which we could do that last yeah, bit, I was gonna we say, just can't do the first I part. I could do that, yeah. Uh, now, sticking with legendary sprinters, our very own Chris Opie was over in the States at the weekend, and that's because the Leadville 100 was on, and he was over there representing GMBN. Traitor. How are you feeling? Suffering like I have never suffered. I cannot get into words. Just how hard it is. You got 20 miles left, I think. Yeah, sounds about right. You, do you know? Do you want to know where you are? Yeah. You're about in between 150 to 200. That's sweet. That's you made 700 better. people. That's, that's sweet. Huh? 700 overtakes. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like someone might overtake me in it. Yeah. But, 
genuinely gruesome fight. Apparently this is climb 9 of 11, so that's good. That's really good. Bear with us, we are going to talk very briefly about cross-country mountain biking, but with good reason. Um, the full video will be up on GMBN at some point soon. I don't want to spoil the ending for you, but uh, basically Chris smashed it. He me? did, yeah. Despite yeah. actually being stitched up royally by GMBN. Yeah. Did you hear? They wouldn't let him use bar ends. Yeah, unbelievably, Chris still managed to get around Leadville despite that handicap. Uh, now, some of the EF Education First were there as well on their alternative program. Best placed was Lachlan Morton. He knew what he was doing, Dan. He had bar ends. Well, you say he knew what he was doing. I was really impressed with him when I heard he was using bar ends. Yeah. And I saw some photos. He's got them in the wrong place. I mean, the clue's in the name, isn't it? Bar <laughs> ends. Yeah. Bar middles for Morton there. Uh, he wasn't actually the best place roadie either there. Unbelievably, this lad, and I call him a lad because he's just 18 years old, called Quinn Simmons, uh, actually finished second. This despite the fact that he lost eight minutes early on due to uh, a series of punctures because someone had thrown carpet tacks on the course. He then caught back up and then still managed to get second in uh, a sprint finish, second to fourth, ahead of Morton and fellow World Tour pro Peter yeah. Stettiner. He yeah, lost eight minutes through those punctures finished three minutes behind the winner. So he's definitely one to watch, isn't he, at the upcoming Junior Road Race Championships in Yorkshire. Yeah, well, speaking of uh, Road World Championships, favourites and people currently playing in the dirt, mm -hmm. both Pauline ferrand Prevot and Mathieu van der Poel have both just won World Mountain Bike Cross Country Cups. In the last couple of weeks, ferrand Prevot won in Val de Sol, and Van der Poel won both Val de Sol and Lenzerheide at the weekend. And actually, that second win for Van der Poel marked his last mountain bike outing of the season, which has been a very successful one by all accounts. Uh, for Ferrand Prevot, though, that marked her first international win since 2015. Uh, you will well remember that she won the Triple Crown World Championships around that time, so cyclocross, mountain bike, and road. But since then, she's been struggling to reach the same form, and it turns out there's a good reason for it. She had something called iliac artery endo fibrosis in both legs. Yeah, so we had to look that one up. It turns out it's actually really relatively common amongst endurance cyclists, generally male, under the age of 40. So you are nearly out of the woods, Lloyd E now. Um, anyway, so what it is, is it's a thickening of the iliac artery, so the ones that feeds your, your legs, um, and it's often diagnosed as lower limb pain when riding. So you can imagine it can sometimes take quite a long time to diagnose. It can be fixed through surgery, uh, which is what Ferrand Prevot had earlier this year. And brilliantly, it seems like she is not only fully recovered, but now almost back to her best. Mm. I'm wondering whether we've got it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, we just got the going slow, but without the pain, I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, before we finish with racing news, uh, just to let you know that if you're looking for the GCN Racing News Show, it's now over on the GCN Racing Channel, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It does sound quite logical. GCN Racing News Show on GCN Racing. Yeah, so if you haven't already subscribed to that, make sure you head over and do that. Click on the bell notification icon as well, so that you are notified every time we've got a race, or indeed, on a Monday when the GCN Racing News Show comes out. Uh, right, well, we should finish cycling shorts with something that completely the other end of the spectrum from racing uh, because we're going to talk about the Detroit slow roll ride. Oh yeah. Uh, this was something that came out from a Reddit discussion which was quite amusing where people were speculating as to whether this photo uh, showed that Hollywood A-lister Jeff Goldblum was out on this ride. Yeah. And, and what was the conclusion? Was he? Well was apparently he? according to the Detroit Free Press he was. Whoa. Uh, he was over there visiting Detroit Bikes, a really cool manufacturer that specialised in urban bikes, uh, and then went out on the Detroit Slow Roll Ride. That ride in itself is a weekly one where they meet up in a different place every single week and take in a unique urban bike ride. Nice. Yeah. I wonder whether they'd like to go to uh, Velo Life. Cafe. Well, it's not, not urban enough, there. but let's hope they don't meet up at cycling cafes too often and get them banned. Good point. Well, that's probably why they start at a different location each week. Yes. Spread the uh, the nuisance yeah, making. Yeah, planned It's giveaway time now. Uh, we're shortly going to be telling you all about the brand new giveaway, but before we do, we're going to announce the five winners who will each get a Whoop subscription and a Whoop band. Uh, uh, those five are Miles Barton, Carol Severa, Gustavo Cuevas, Kira Mooney, and finally Matthias Quintadura. So well done to all of you. Congratulations, yes. Right, what have we got to give away this week, Sai? Well, if you just give me one minute, Dan, I will go and get them. 
Here we go, workstands for our mates over at Park Tool. So here we have the PCS 10.2, which is like your bells and whistles home mechanics workstand. And there is the PCS 9.2, which is like a more stripped down version. Both of them can be easily put up and taken down and adjusted for height, or you can alter uh, the angle of the clamp. So depending on what you're working on, what type of bike, which bit of bike, that kind of thing. It's easily stored too. I know that side because I actually bought a Park Tool stand when I very first started at GCN just before 2013. Yeah. I bought one just this summer, actually, mate. Did um, you? I is. didn't know that. Yeah. I don't know why we're talking about this, though. No, I don't know either. Should we let them know how to enter? Well, and how many to give away, because we've got four. Two of these and two of those. Wow. Uh, well worth getting your entries in yeah. on time, then. Uh, you have until Monday the 19th of August at 10 a.m. British uh, summer time. Uh, and to do that, all you need to go to is the link in the description just below this video, at which point you'll find all the details on how to enter. Don't wait until Monday, just do it now. Yeah, get it done. Oh, I'd wait till Monday, I'm a real procrastinator. Yeah, me too, yeah, totally. But don't do that. Tech of the week now, and we will start with two very cool updates from our mates over at Komoot. The first is that you can now download the Komoot app onto a Garmin device. Uh, of relevance to cyclists, it uh, is the fact that you can get it on an Edge 520 and up, and also Garmin watches too. And then the other update, which is of relevance to us all, is the fact that Komoot have gone HD, which might actually need some explaining, because it did for Sai. Well, it did, yeah. So that was me thinking HD maps meant high definition. But no, it actually means uh, they've changed the file type as well, right? I don't know if anyone else worked this out, but yeah, they've gone from a raster file to a vector file, which basically means that instead of uh, the map being saved as a collection of images, it's actually now a collection of data points instead. So it means that the maps respond more quickly when you zoom in or zoom out, because instead of having to load whole new images, it literally just loads a few data points. And it also means, therefore, they can be more detailed as well. They can have more information in them. Well, very cool indeed. Uh, that new version is already available on the desktop and the Android versions of the app. Uh, and they're currently rolling out iOS as we speak. Yeah, right now, change of gear, Panormal Studios, which is a cycling clothing brand, have partnered up with Porter, Yoshida and Co. Ooh, sounds posh. Well, yeah, I'm reliably informed that they make high-end bags. And the two have got together to, uh, I think they're called Capsule Collections, right. of six bags for cyclists. Yeah. Do you hear the six bags? Oh, yes, please. Uh, well, first up, we have a rucksack, which Ooh. has got a clever helmet storage department within it. Excellent. And they've also got a briefcase. Not Maybe. typically a cyclist bag. They've but... got a camera bag, a musette, a valuables case, and finally, probably the highlight for us as cyclists, they've also got a saddlebag forward slash tool roll. Well, the highlight actually, Dan, it might be the price. For a saddlebag, it's 90 euros. Whoa, for a saddlebag? For a saddlebag. For a rucksack, 790 euros. Blimey, I'll stick to the saddlebag, I think. Would you? Yeah. Yeah, if I get a trade price. You wouldn't have many valuables in your valuables case. Next up, it is hack forward slash bodge of the week. We've been going through all the ones that you sent in. These are our favorites. First up, uh, this one came in from William who spotted this bike at a cafe stop uh, in Salama. In the USA. That's uh, Salem, Massachusetts, to all of our uh, US. Right, yeah, okay. Anyway, this was the bike, so you know how bad I am with place names. Oh, Salem. <laughs> well, that's what I just read it out as it's uh, written. Yeah, anyway, here we go. Uh, to be fair, that, that's got to be a hack, surely. I mean, I've not often wanted to uh, ride a missile or a torpedo, uh, but there we go. Yeah. Someone's done it and they've made it look really quite good. Yeah, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but still, like you said, they've done a good job, haven't they? Yeah, make it be a, a real bugger to get on and off, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. You've got to swing your leg pretty high no, to I, get it over the fins of your missile. Ironically, on, on a woman's bike, isn't it? Which is supposed to be much easier to get your leg yeah. through. Yeah, maybe it is a bodge after all. Uh, right, next up, we've got this one sent in by Amir from Graz in Austria. Oh, my uh, word. Yeah, so this is a folding bike that looks like it might be about to fold in more ways than one. Wow. Uh, yeah. Don't ride that. No, that looks like a death trap, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it would probably fold quite gently. <laughs> there aren't any words really, are there? And just sort of allow you <laughs> yeah, to sort of come to a grinding halt. Sparks going across the tarmac. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely a bodge, Absolutely, that one. Yeah. Uh, next up is this one from Christian, north of Copenhagen. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? Let's there start is. with the basket, which is uh, in fact a bin. Yeah. Bar, Bar ends. ends. 
Whoa! Nice. Put that together. So it's like that bar end on the end of the bars as yeah. well. Yeah. It looks like an old BMX, Dan. It's like a sports utility there's vehicle. There's also an umbrella there. There's a, some sort of walking stick. And hydration there's a hydration system, system and a padlock as well. Oh, and a bum bag. Yeah, secure. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Honestly, it's a hack. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably a hack. Don't know what it does, but it's probably a hack. Uh, this one's sent in by Zeno uh, from uh, Brussels South Station. Uh, I like Whoa. that. Sometimes you've got to get more layback on your seat post. Yeah. So why not turn to plumbing? That's a lot of layback there, though, isn't it? I, I don't never think of like plumbing as being particularly strong from a kind of, you know. No. Like, no, it's quite a soft metal normally, isn't it? Yeah. So you could potentially have even more layback fairly soon and an upward facing saddle. Well, at least you'll sit on the pannier rack uh, as opposed to just like right. landing Apple on your back tire. Or bodge. Okay, bodge. Uh, and finally, we had this one from Guy. Uh, this is his Ridley Noah Fast. He is over in Belgium. Uh, switched bikes from the Noah SL to Noah Fast and didn't have a new integrated handlebar, so I've put the old stem and handlebars and drilled a hole in one of the spacers. So it fits. Well, I, that's, that's, that's a massive hack, isn't I'd it? I'd say that's a hack, yeah, because a lot of a lot of aero bikes now come with their proprietary bars and stems, whereas, and so I never thought there was a way of making it work. No. But check it out. Very good work to you, Guy. Uh, right, that's all for Hacks and Bodges this week. If you would like to get involved ready for next week's GCN show, uh, use the hashtag GCN hack on social media, but make sure you also upload your photos to the uploader, a link to which is in the description below. You might want to put a bit of bathroom sealant around the hole there, just so that you know water doesn't go yeah. in. I'm not sure what water would do to the inside of your steerer tube, but you probably don't want it there. Top advice from Si. There. Yep, bathroom sealant. Right, it is caption competition time. Now, that part of the show where you can get your hands on a GCN water bottle. All you've got to do is caption a photo that we're about to show you. The best ones uh, will be picked out and will win a water bottle. This was last week's photo and we will give you the results right now. Yes, the winner of this caption uh, is Benjamin Toomey who wrote, uh, it's between two people actually, I'll do the first line, you do the second line, sorry. Uh, Wow, who's that? He's going fast. Is that an e-bike? No, it's Emmanuel Buchmann on Emmanuel Bike Man. Yeah. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it I'd was have been really good. Emmanuel that, Buchmann on Emmanuel Bike Man. Yeah, well done, Benjamin. Send us your address on Facebook as a message and we'll get that bottle straight out to you. A worthy winner. Uh, this week, uh, this is a photo of uh, Letizia Paternoster uh, after having won the under-23 European Championships. Brace yourself. Go on, then. And that's it, that's my caption. Brace yourself because there's a braces on the blokes there. But I see. Ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah. might be able to do better at home. I suggest you probably can. Get your thinking caps on, and you too might get a GCN Comeback water bottle like uh, Mr. Toomey. Brace yourself. You fell for that one. I did, yeah. Before we get on to what's coming up on the channel, before we get on to our favourite comments in the past seven days, we are going to answer a training-related question. Uh, don't forget that this is your opportunity to win three months free subscription to Zwift. All you've got to do is leave your training-related question in the comment section down below with the hashtag AskGCNTraining. Uh, this week's one comes in from Frankie. So says, hi guys, love the show. Uh, I'm a lifelong swimmer, 31 years old, and just getting into cycling. Because of my swimming background, I have a decent cardiovascular engine. However, also because of my swimming background, I have weak spindly legs. Should I A, do lots of strength work to get the legs up to speed, uh, B, do lots and lots of kilometers to get the legs up to speed, or C, something else entirely? I'm also a lean 90 kilograms, so I don't think I'll ever be the best climber if that matters. Uh, well, first up, welcome to the world of cycling. And I'll yeah. tell you something for free, straight away. Uh, you don't have to be an ex-swimmer to have weak spindly legs. No, uh, good you, point, so? yeah. Swimmers, though, do generally make very good cyclists once they've converted, and that's because of the immense cardiovascular system that they've developed over time, which is also the foundation of being a good cyclist. Absolutely, yeah. Who knows? You too might one day uh, have something in common with Alfredo Binder, just yes. like Lloydy. Uh, right, now, Zwift coaches have recommended 100% that you do uh, your training on the bike, and they've said you want to focus on two key areas. So firstly, it would be endurance work, so trying to get at least six hours a week on the bike, relatively low intensity, they reckon that'll be just about the right amount of kind of stress and fatigue on your uh, lower limbs to get them to improve and to sort of convert that fitness that you've got into cycling specific fitness. Then the other is to do sprint training. So six to 20 second max sprint, super useful as a bike rider, but also actually it's the best way of building muscle mass on the bike as well. So obviously Dan didn't do much sprinting. Um, no. Although annoyingly, you're a far better sprinter than me. 
Yeah. Despite the fact that your legs doesn't are lame make, against. Doesn't make me a good sprinter, does it? Really? No. Uh, right, well, best of luck with that. Yeah. Let us know how you get on. I've got a feeling you might be quite a good sprinter at 90 kilograms, even if most of that body mass uh, is upper body rather than in the legs. That might be where I went wrong. Yeah, one of the areas, yes. Uh, right then, uh, we picked out a few of our favourite comments from underneath the videos last week. Uh, two, in fact, underneath how to plan a gravel ride. The first of those from James Moore. Jeremy has to be one of the happiest people on the planet. I love Jeremy. Well, I'll tell you what, James, there's nothing wrong with being grumpy either, every now and again. Sometimes he's a bit too happy for my liking. And this one from Mr. Scrofulous. I loved the Hero Adventure soundtrack as Jeremy discovered streams and leaves and triumphed over the caterpillar hordes. It was magnificent. It was, actually. <coughs> Should we have a little clip? Caterpillar hordes. No. But it was a mean bit of riding from Jeremy. Uh, right, uh, James did a great video about can you replace a car with a bike? Uh, under which Trevor Wolves, Trevor Wolves uh, said he can't afford a car because he has so many bikes. I expect a lot of people are going to emphasise with that. 298 okay. thumbs up for that one. Uh, emphasise or emphasise? Uh, anyway, ketogenic diets video from Ollie last Sunday. Uh, this comment came in from Tom Walton. I could watch this guy talk about mung beans and I'd still be captivated. Well, good job, because on Wednesday this week, it's how to fuel with mung beans. Is it? No, it's not. I don't know. What is Wednesday? Okay. Right, on Wednesday, I'll tell you, it's how to perform in hot weather. So, oh, right. uh, on Thursday, we're Perfectly going to Perfectly timed go here through... in the UK at the moment. <laughs> yeah, on Thursday, we're going to go through the top climbers of all time in the world of cycling. On Friday, we're going to tell you what to look out for when you're choosing a gravel bike. Yeah, on Saturday, Ollie, a local to, kind of local, to the World Championships this year, uh, takes us on a course preview. So, what to look out for. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one very yeah. much. Uh, and then on Sunday, you saw a clip of it at the top of the show. Hank rides a recumbent at 60 kilometers per hour. So stay tuned to that one. And then Monday, of course, as Dan already mentioned, the Racing News Show is over on the GCN Racing channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe now. And then we're back in the set on Tuesday for the GCN Show. We are getting towards the end of the GCN Show now, but as ever, there is time for Extreme Corner. And this week, it's one of our own, Chris Opie, made a, uh, a shred it, which I believe is a thing. Did he? From just before Leadville, here he is, shredding. Not bad for a lad who's not allowed bar ends on his bike. No. Imagine a shredding he would have done with some bar ends on the end of those bars. Absolutely, or even in, in towards the middle, like Lachlan Morton. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, before we finish the show this week, uh, we want to show you some new products that we've got over on the GCN shop. Uh, socks! Yes, yeah, socks. So first up, we've got these, which are the country socks, as you can see. This is France, but we also have Italy and Spain. But we've also made some special ones to go with the GCN fan kit. Yeah. You can see here now. These are super cool, aren't they? Yeah. You've got to love a pair of socks. Uh, available now in the GCN shop. Uh, you can find that, the link in the description beneath this video, or shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Now, we've been talking about it all show, seemingly, but just in case you haven't got the message by now already, if you want to watch the GCN Racing news show, go on to GCN Racing. To make it easier, we're going to let you link to it on screen just now. 